Darren Dance here on Friday afternoon, on a very wet Friday afternoon in Victoria with Pete Morgandy, who's sitting up there at the uh, Sunshine State of Ballarat in lockdown, homeschooling, doing domestic duties and just living the dream, really. Look at the sun glaring, yeah, off, the, look at the sun glaring off the fence in the background. Well, that might be the moon. She's pretty dull here in Ballarat. Pretty dull in Victoria, I think. Burn off. <laughs> no, she's uh, after two. Lovely spring days. Um, bloke upstairs must have thought, well, they've had a couple of days. We'll just send down 40-odd mil. I reckon I reckon he had a look and said, oh, it looks like Darren and Liz are feeding. It's their roster weekend on. So, uh, yeah, we can't have them working in the sunshine. They can, <laughs> they can suffer in the mud. Anyway, <laughs> oh, dear. it's all happening out. It's all happening out. And here, three foals born this week on the, we're going to rename it Billy Farm, I think. Um, we're hanging out for a cult, but um, on the farm here, we've had three fillies. And um, interestingly enough, we've got uh, four more due in the next seven days. So hopefully by the end of next week, we'll be sitting here saying we've had seven. Yes, with a few cults. That'd be handy. Well, let's go back to our, oh, we had a plethora of runners, Pete. Um, we've got quite a few to go through, um, The whole, at, at least two that I can think of. We'll be able to go through these to the nth degree. We uh, kicked off at Warwick Nabil, where we had uh, horse made the racetrack, and I suppose 12 months ago we would have been wondering, were we ever going to get there? Little free eagle filly or mare, eagles and pins, and... Uh, Only kicked off over 1,200, and I think she surprised us all, Darren. She was wide. We drew wide, but Paul was keen to run it just for the sake of experience. And uh, she was green in the straight when she felt no horses inside her. She was looking for the rail, but it's only beaten five or six lengths. And considering what she did wrong, it was uh, well and truly a pass mark. Yeah, Yeah. um, credit to Paul Prushka here. Um, She's had a share of problems um, in life and he seems to have got her in a good space. Uh, four-year-old mare making her debut by um, the staying stay in Free Eagle who did my, all his racing over in the UK. Quite a good horse. Uh, she's bred to be a 2,2400 metre mare. Uh, kicking off over 1,200. Uh, I was very, very concerned about that. I thought she'd probably run tailed off or last um, and get out sprinted and I was quite surprised to see her settle nicely um, midfield not much worse and then then on the corner she would get left flat footed here and drop out or she's going to quicken and be in the finish well she did quicken I think she might have been three or four wide on the bend young Tatum bull rider and of course, as you said, when she got into the straight and she was under a bit of pressure, she was very green and uh, she went sideways to the fence and uh, the girl had to grab it because um, she would have cannoned into another horse and probably got suspended. But um, she did probably come in six or seven horses in the straight, which probably cost her two or three lengths. As you said, she only got beat five. So she probably would have got beaten two and ran fourth if she went straight. Credit to the Tatum Bull, though, at post-race saying... Probably needs a senior rider on and uh, someone a little bit stronger than myself at this stage of her career. Take me hat, hat off to put a say for that. Um, so pass mark for me. I thought that was uh, all things considered from what we know, where we've been. Um, wouldn't surprise me to see this filly winning over 2,000 plus. But on that, uh, she could go to a 14 or 1,600 next start. And if she doesn't dower out from the run, um, she could be a winning chance. So my gut feel was we wouldn't see the best of her until she got 2,000. Um, she's probably just a little bit sharper than, than what I Got you now. You dropped out. No, I agree, Darren. She, and Paul did say, you know, 14, 1,600, and he did more than competitive at the right track. So, uh, good result. Good result, considering, uh, you know, like I said, it was, I didn't know what to expect. You didn't know what to expect. And uh, we've got a really good result. 
We had to wait a few days for our next runner, which was at Sandown yesterday, uh, Wednesday. And look, it was a terrific effort by Hasseltoff. Unfortunately, it's eight seconds from 14 starts now, but this would be one of his best seconds, if he can have a best second. Uh, just got into a sticky position prior to the home turn, and we know this horse takes a bit to wind up. And while he had 300 yards to wind up, he probably needed 350 yards to wind up. And just got bloused by a horse of Archie Alexander's late in running, beating the neck. Terrific run, 61 and a half kilos. The winner had three on us. The favourite had about six kilos on us. All things equal, you know, in a, in a set weight race, we, we'd probably win by three or four links against that mob. Horse is flying. I thought um, Karamar had the favourite. I don't think it was odds on, but it, it might have started odds on, actually. Near enough to. It was pretty yeah. much flip of the coin. Um, now, Craig Williams did the smart thing here. He, um, he followed the odds on favourite, got in right behind it and uh, tracked it everywhere. But unfortunately, um, it didn't go like an odds on favourite, actually. And um, it, it kind of, when we were ready to go and wind up, we couldn't because we were in behind it and we needed a gap. And then by the time we got the gap and took off, I don't know what we made up in the straight. We must have made it up five lengths yeah. on the leading division. <laughs> But unfortunately, another horse made up uh, 5.2 lengths <laughs> and just blouses. Yeah. I think we actually hit the front, didn't we? Yeah. Yeah. And then so, just bang, last drive. The ground we made up from the 200 to the 50, and, and then, you know, and whether it was that three kilos and the momentum that horse had, I mean, it was, you know, I, I'm, I'm looking at the 200 thinking we might top five it, and then within 100 yards, you're thinking, geez, we're going to win it. Just to be blouse like, so no, he's and in he fairness, Darcy, in fairness, yeah. Darcy's horse did come from last, and yeah. it was out wide. Uh, maybe that going was better, or he's just better that horse. But he certainly got rolling and um, flew down the outside and just got us. Um, mind you, our horse was still strong through the line, and I got a good message from uh, Matt DeCock straight after to say, you know, just bring on more ground. So. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, let's, think, let's see what happens next time. Yeah, but, you know, if we just got to win one race now to get his rating to a point where we can play in those good races over the spring, but we've just got to get uh, one win to do that. And I think the early signs, Darren, too, that shows that he's looking for a trip was he normally bounces into sort of a, a position without too much riding. Craig had to scrub him up to actually get in behind him. And that's generally a sign that a horse is looking for more, more ground and, um, once he's settled, balanced, we've seen exactly that with his last cut. He, he must have ran home probably the best 400 easily. Oh, well, with the winner, obviously. Uh, yeah, the winner would. I think the winner come from behind us. So, yeah. yeah, the times would be good. So, there you go. So, all right. Uh, all right. Tomorrow. We Muddy be... Valley. <laughs> Do you say Muddy? <laughs> muddy Valley. <laughs> yeah, normally Muddy Valley, but maybe Muddy Valley. We... Uh, Amazing. We've drawn the best barriers we could ever draw, and one horse mightn't run because of the wet. And you, you know, you got another horse first up, probably not quite ready. And then you got old oh, money bags. It's probably going to be the first time he's going to see a bog like this. We've drawn gate three with all of them, basically. So we'll go to literary magnet, magnate, the good two year old, uh, sorry, three year old filly now, who uh, by Matthew Williams is on a thousand guineas pass path. It kicks off in the Atlantic Jewel. Trialed up well. This is a good field. Um, and Matthews has made it. No, Matthews made it known that she'll take good benefit from this. But she's out to run a cheeky race. I think Darren at about uh, actually, what was she about seven or eight bucks in the betting? Yep, she is. Hang on, I'll just get rid of this phone. They're all mate Yandel's on. Um, yeah. Um, look, to be honest, when he said he was going to run her in the Atlantic Jewel, I thought, well, she's going to be a 20 to 1 chance because um, it's always a very good race. And um, they persistent. Is that a share? They persistent. Tell her we've got shares in a couple of That's one of these stupid Sydney numbers. 
One of those stupid dodgy numbers. Um, yeah, I thought she'd be 20 to 1, and then um, she's come up 750. So I know she's a good filly. Um, I also know she uh, loves loves it wet. Like she, that day uh, she won at Warnable was pretty wet. And uh, she'll get through the ground. Uh, but as you said, she's uh, probably going to need the run. I think she's – look, she's – I know she's good, but she's probably unders. She can run top four. Um, it'd be it'd be good, and if she won, it'd be better than good. Yeah, I think um, what's in her favour. She's a genuine racehorse. We've seen that in two starts, like the big um, big money race at Caulfield. You know, that was an outstanding effort to to run second there. Um, it come from a maiden at Warnable to straight to the city. You've obviously got heaps of talent, but I just think she's a genuine racehorse and. Matthew mentioned on radio this morning that she's come back better. So you would just hope that equates to another couple of links and she's probably not far away. Um, well, I think it'll it'll set the path one and Saturday will set the path for her for the spring, whether she's up to 1,000 guineas grade or yeah. whether she's got to go um, down the B grade path. But um, anyway, we'll get a good look at her Saturday. Um, I don't think the rain's any concern. I, I imagine there will be, there might be a few scratchings or they might just yeah. run because they all are on a path. You know, you yeah. don't know, do you? No, that's right. That's right. Moving on, never again, Clinton McDonald, uh, first emergency in the Chautauqua, the listed $1,200, $126. Wouldn't it be nice to know if you had a $126 chance, it was half a chance, but uh, he might never <laughs> run. And even if he gets a run, he might run. That makes sense. Yeah, I, the pre-race report from me was he was undecided whether to run or not. Um, just listening to him, um, my my gut feeling is he'll he'll wait a week and run him at Flemington. Um, whether he gets into the field or not, I, I think he might uh, just pull him out and wait a week. He's got great second up form, um, and I don't think he wants to waste any runs where he can't win, uh, particularly early in the spring. Because he's a horse that likes a bit of bit of a gap between his runs, and um, he's, he reckons he can win a good race this spring, but um, he just wants to time it and uh, not waste runs. So fair enough. And uh, so I would not be surprised at all if he comes out. And Flemington and Caulfield are his tracks by uh, previous fall. <laughs> now a horse that was scratched last week because he had a, a wither boil or. Uh... Been treated since and fixed. I think no, that was last week, wasn't it? Yeah, Mr. Moneybags yeah. in a mile race. And Lindsay's uh, pre race this morning was rain, hail, or shine. This bloke's going around. So uh, obviously, he's got a race in mind called the Gold Nugget here at Ballarat in about, I think it's three weeks tomorrow, uh, Sunday. So if he doesn't go around, it just um, it, it makes it hard to be sort of go into that race and being a winning chance. I think he was he was actually a bit nicked off that he didn't run last week because a couple of good judges rang him up and said, your horse is a winning chance. And we all sort of, we didn't laugh, but we knew he had to go to the Heatherly last week because it wasn't much about. But as it turned out, all things equal, he was probably a, a real winning chance on top of the ground that day. Didn't eventuate. So we're saving it up tomorrow. And by the last race, <laughs> God knows what the track will be. Yeah, well, I don't think he's got any wet track form at all, the horse. Um, but then he had no Caulfield form at all when he came out and ran a blind the last start. So, yeah, he missed, the, he missed last week with the wither ball, which, you know, he would have been a top four show there. Um, I don't know if he'll handle the wet or not. Some of the written tycoons do, some don't. Yeah. Um, there's no hard and fast rule. Um, the horse is flying. Um, you know, he's, he's all he's talking about is that Ballarat race has been his target. Probably go around two dollars there, because um, everyone in the world knows. And then, you know, tomorrow it's not a maintenance run. He's certainly there to win. Yeah. Uh, um, if he gets through the wet. He'll be right in it. No, I agree. I've just lost you there for a minute, Darren. You're still there by voice. So hang in there. And we'll get you back in a sec. Maybe. Here we are. Maybe. Yeah, no, look, um, 
and, and not just the wet track, the valley, big horse. You, you just sort of, you would think this is a uh, long stride and all that. He'll find it tough to get around. But then again, as Lindsay pointed out to me, I blew one myth with Caulfield. I'm about to blow another one. So, I don't know. He's got the horse. He's got the old boy in good form. He's been a great old horse, this horse. I don't know. This would be his sixth or seventh preparation. And he keeps stepping up to the mark and giving all the owners a, a good run for their dough. Yep. He loves it. Sunday. Um, it's going to be wet. You can think it'd be wet at Geelong. We've got Black Mirror, who is currently fourth emergency in a... Um, you know, 1,700 metre race. There's every chance she'll get a run in the sense that you would think it's a big field, that there'll be a lot there that are probably not going to run because of the wet. And if that's the case, if she gets a run, she loves the wet. Yeah, just thinking of Pat and Ryan, did we have Periscope go around last Sunday? Oh, geez, we forgot him. How come you missed that? Now we talk about hurdlers on this program. We might have to come to him at the we'll end. Come back, because that's a special special mention. Gee, John Clements will be on the phone in a minute. <laughs> he won't be the only one. No, Black Mirror, um, I don't know, when did it go around last week? Uh, it ran at Echuca the week before on the Thursday. Yeah. Yeah, yeah so he's uh, she was on the back up there, and he's going to have to back her up again, he said, because she's bouncing and snorting like a stallion. So. Yeah. He's got a nom for uh, Geelong. She loves it wet. Um, she's fourth emergency, but hopefully with this rain, um, hopefully she gets a run because if she gets a run, she'll give anything a shake that she's in now. And she's on a plan to get to uh, the city over 2,000 metres um, and she'll run really well. So I hope she gets in. She doesn't have a jockey book. She's $13. If she gets in, she's probably going to be 7 or $8. And we're just going to wait to see who scratches if she gets mm. a run. And then we'll just grab one of the riders that have missed out on a, on a ride there. So there'll be there's, all the good riders are going there. So there'll be no shortage. Um, but talking to Pat yesterday, um, bouncing out of her skin, couldn't be happier with her. Um, been a great boy and uh, going to have a bit of fun with her over the next uh, month to six weeks. And particularly when we get to the valley, because she'll be able to get to the front and, um, if she can be leading on the corner there, I doubt they'll run her down. So she'll get to town, but just uh, be nice to go here and, and just tick one off on the way. It's a bit of a tease, that $13 and four sixty the place, because the thing is, for her to get a run, that, that'll get carved in half, like you said. If she gets in, um, and a couple of the favourite ones are out. But, uh, you know, look, she gets a run. Gate one might be a little issue, but, oh, look, I can you can see this field might be cut in half with scratchings, but we'll wait and see. And if she is in, um, she's a very good chance because her last running at a run at a Chuka was outstanding, wide all the way. Um, yeah, Periscope. Let's go back to the old boy. Well, let's Periscope. leave him to the end. Let's finish off on Wednesday. All right. Well, we've got potentially let's do on Wednesday. And... Yep. Well, I've write your name in a 1,300-metre benchmark 70. Now, Lindsay wised up and scratched from a race here at Ballarat on Tuesday, identified too much pace in the race. And as it was, it was two went silly in front. and um, He was probably going to be sitting behind getting the kickback. So he threw that out the window and he's going to go to a track where he runs well at. Um, he trialled well against a nice horse the other day. I won't mention the name. And... Lindsay said, I couldn't have him any better. Uh, we'll get someone like Yandel on and we'll see how we go over the 1300, which looks his trip, that 13 or 1400. Well, he said he's got him going as good as he can get him. And uh, he's got a couple of wins in him. So it be interesting to see him on speed of Sandown. It is very hard to be on speed of Sandown lead all the way because it's such a long straight, but um, he is in 70 grade. Um, it is 1300. So if he can cuddle him up until late and then let him kick, well, you know, he's going to be a chance. Yep. No, I agree. 
Uh, the other nomination, and uh, we're just going to wait a couple of days to see how he comes through. His run was Hasseltoff, we mentioned earlier. He's a chance to go to an 1,878. He'll drop four kilos on the good run the other day, and uh, that 70 was as strong as you can get. It was almost like a 78. Um, he'd be very hard to beat if he backs up. Yeah, I think I thought Robbie um, understands that this is probably the last meeting at Sandown midweek. Um, they then switched to the valley and to some country courses. So he was keen to keep this big horse on big tracks being Sandown, Caulfield or uh, Flemington. So we've got to have a look at whether we send him around Wednesday. Um, look, if he's right, um, he, he can win that. Um, Hopefully, I, I really hope he does go around because we do need to win this midweek race to get our rating up because there's lo lots of lovely 2,000-metre races through the strength for this horse that he'll be very, very competitive in. But we probably just need to, you know, it's a shame we didn't win the other day or we'd be going straight to a Saturday race in a couple of weeks, but we won't get a run at the moment. So um, hopefully we can go next Wednesday, pick that up, tick it off, and then, um, you know, he'll be at his peak fourth up to go to 2000 and, you know, have, you know, probably only have three or four starts and that'll be eight for the prep. So we've got to get this rating up and get on with it. He's a victim of, his, of himself. Um, what did you say? He's had eight seconds out of 14 starts. Um, and that's why he's still in this grade. And um, we need to get out of this grade so we can guarantee ourselves runs going forward. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Um, so that's it. And I think as we push further into the week, Obviously, serious suspect never accepted for. I think it was the Chautauqua who's going to run in, and he'll go to the Bobby Lewis next week, which is probably a good move, knowing all the rain that's coming. And you, you know, uh, he has been to that track, but it's probably not an ideal track for him unless you draw well and you can position yourself up on the speed. So we'll wait for the Bobby Lewis next week. Um, had some horses trial and they're not far away from the races. Dandy Classic raised the colours, a dandy man. They all trial well. Miss 10,000 put her foot out for the first time and trialled well. It was 200 horses trial at our app, 20 trials of 10. So just, and I actually spoke to Mitch Freeman after. He said the bank up is because all those trials that were cancelled sort of through July... It's put a lot of horses behind for their spring preps. They're sort of that 10 to 14 days behind. So as soon as there's a good grass track available, yeah. they're just swamping it. So, and, and you know, we've got horses in that mix as well. But um, ours are all coming along good, which is which is terrific. And oh, I can't wait to see a couple of those because a couple seem to have improved from what the trainers are telling us. And I've got one last Saturday at Warrantabille. I actually thought Eagles and Pins was in the first race. And I switched it on and it wasn't. But Paul had a horse win that come from second last, a horse called Handshake. And if he, if anyone wants to go back and watch that replay, it was as big a win as you'd seen in the country for a long time. I then went and studied its form. And it actually ran third behind a dandy man on debut at Geelong. So let's hope that our bloke could take the steps, next steps, um, it was like it was a warrant to be able to come from second last and you don't do it. It went as wide as you can go, one by three hard held. And uh, yeah, so hopefully that means that a dandy man's form can stand up and uh, he can do all that and more, but maybe at Flemington or Caulfield. Looking forward to a lot of those kicking off. Now, Peter, the, the next segment. Yep. The next segment is sponsored by Pearson's Nursery <laughs> and Kimberley Marketing. Yes. On behalf of the Ballarat, the Ballarat Club last Sunday, ATB had their first uh, hurdle runner since, uh, well, Revolutionary had one start over the jumps probably a couple of years ago. Yep. And prior to that, that was probably 20 years years before. Just lost you for a bit. I don't even know if ATB was in opera. Periscope um, came yesterday for a break. He, uh, he was terrific. Talk about what, uh, 
Um, you're watching the race, and obviously the favourite, Pateman, had to ride, and Pateman was quite keen to ride out, Blake, if it all, if it all worked out and it didn't. Kieran Maas sponsored the race. He was on Kieran Maas' favourite. It looks like being anything. You know, it'll probably line up in races like the Gallywood next year. And as I was watching the race and I was seeing him slipping away, I was seeing Periscope sort of going back in the field. All of a sudden, he dug him up a couple of times and he picked up. He seemed to pick up over the jumps, which is a sign of a good jumper. And then on the flat, he just sort of, you know, whacked away. And then next thing you know, you could see probably 400 out. He was going to finish third or fourth, but to the horse's credit, he he dug in deep, you know, and um, bloody good effort first up. And, and like those maidens on Grand National Steeplechase Day do always bring out the stronger maidens. It's not like at Coleraine or Cassidy. So his run was terrific and uh, he's got a future in the game. He's, you know, he's going to win his share of races. Um, how far he goes... You don't know, but the one thing he's got in favour and all the good races seem to be been won by Raise the Flag, bred horses. I think the winner was a Raise the Flag. Paul's horse that won the Grand National Steeple Chase was a Raise the Flag. A Blaze, the real good jump, is a Raise the Flag. So he's got a bit going for him, considering probably 18 months ago he was happily eating grass in your paddock. Terrific effort. Um... You've got to really give it to Pat Ryan. He's got the horse going super well. Two maiden hurdles at Ballarat last Sunday. Two raise the flag Quinellas. Um, in, you know, obviously, they'll, they'll both by raise the flag in both divisions. They were the first four home there. Um, very safe jumper. Um, Aaron Lynch just said he, he just got a horse went across him and he sort of dropped back a bit, lost his stride, kept him out of trouble, gave him plenty, plenty of room, you know, being his debut, probably jumped a bit high, mm. um, just jumped over cautious. And every time he jumped, he lost a little bit of ground. Uh, but he felt when he had to go for him, he just couldn't believe how the horse went and how he quickened. And he just said he gave everything, you know, he just kept giving and giving and giving. And he really found the line. As you said, wouldn't surprise me if um, Kieran Mars horse, the horse that won, wouldn't surprise me if it won a, you know, the best of the best, um, either at Oak Bank or in Melbourne or wherever, Warnable, wherever. It, it's a, it's a, it's a star. Um, I think it might have run in the Guineas down in New Zealand when they bought yeah. it. They paid big money for it. Um, but I, you know, certainly. Any race, the flag that wins a race in New Zealand, now it's just going to get snapped up quick, smart as a jumper. Um, so, look, credit to Pat. Um, great run. Um, for me and Liz watching it on the couch, um, nerve wracking. Um, thank God he's a safe jumper. But like you on the corner, I thought he was going to drop out and run nowhere. But to his credit, he really flew home. Um, we were going to take him to a jumps race in Murray Bridge next week, but that's been abandoned. So that is the end of the jump season. And uh, we did toss up whether to send him around at uh, Kite and over 2,800 or the Valley over 3,000. But it's a bit hit and miss here at the minute with the weather. And um, we just didn't want to undo any good work we've done on the horse. So he goes to the paddock. He, he's light enough. Um, he's light enough, but he's sound. And um, he'll have a good break now. He'll stay out until middle of November. And then, uh, you know, you'll probably see him um, back in February, March. Uh, but, but he'll stick to those high weight races and probably and two of it and the jumps races. So he's always going to be on a soft six, which is mandatory now for, that, for those sort of races. So we're going to keep him right up all the hard tracks and um, see if we can get him going for the autumn. And it'll be lovely to see him you know, going into the Warnable Carnival over one of those, you know, in one of those jumps races. Um, hopefully we're through the worst of COVID and uh, we're in a situation where we can all go to the races and we can go up and stand on that hill, Pete. Yep. Some of us might have to leave and go up about 40 minutes before the jump to make it. Um, <laughs> get our breath back. But it'd be lovely to go to the Warnable Carnival and stand up on that hill and watch Periscope go around are probably one of the greatest jump meetings we've got in the country. And we can then all venture back to the sponsor's marquee 
the nursery. <laughs> sure, Clemo. Nursery. Clemo will sponsor a marquee for that day. <laughs> well, as you said to me off air, there's no chance of him walking up the hill. <laughs> Not with all the bags of money he's got after getting the Cronella. Didn't he get the Cronella the other day? Cronella. Uh, I think he got the Cronella, the exactor, the first four, yeah. the first eight. I think he tipped 12 winners on a nine horse cart. He's pretty good, John. <laughs> No, it was a good result. And he's, he didn't win a race this prep, but he probably placed six half a dozen times or more. And, and uh, he's racing. Is, is, there any chance of getting, is there any chance of getting the last 400 of that race on now? Yeah, well, we'll to finish up, we'll put it on, actually. We'll show the last 600 just to show you know, where he come from. And obviously, the winner was good, but um, he knuckled down like a little bulldog and uh, that's what he's done all his career, even if he hasn't won. He's tried his heart out. So uh, I'll pop that up to finish off the ATB TV this week. All right. Well, that's a wrap for the week, Pete. Um, yeah. That leaves us until... See what happens tomorrow at the Valley. Yeah, we... Uh, yeah, it's going to be interesting. The weather's going to play a big part and probably more so Sunday could play a part with a winner, but yeah, you can't deny that uh, you know, some nice horses kicking off in literary magnate um, and money bags. Well, he tries his heart out, but um, he might need the ski tracks on or the the, uh, the bulldozer tracks on by race nine at the Valley tomorrow. Oh, well, they've all got to get through it. So let's see what happens. That's it. All right. Well, let's leave it there. Um, and here, go and have a good look at uh, Periscope's last 600. Till next week. I'm Darren Dance with Peter Morgandy. See you, everyone. Fourth is Tolmac as they come to the third last. So able back fifth, the Kuna Matata's come off the bit. Then Periscope, Buffalo, Bill and Zoffany Rocket. Raise you 10. I don't want to put the mocker on you, but it's been going like a winner since the starter said go. It's five links to not usual dream. Tolmac third, then upswing. Two to jump as they make the home turn. Kuna Matata's going to stay on all right. It's starting to run on a bit. Then Periscope followed by So able On the home turn, raise you 10 in one race, the rest in another. But it's a jumping race and he's got to jump the last two. He comes to the first in the double. Up and over it, no worries. Seven links to not usual dream. Akuna Matata's getting out of the ruck. So is Periscope. They run on. Here's the last for Raise You 10. He's up and over it like a professional that's had 50 goes at the caper. And he's going to canter in. He's a mile in front. Not unusual dream is hanging on for a place with Periscope and Akuna Matata's going to run fourth. But Raise You 10, he's down. Sits up for the judge, Pateman, and takes the money in the first by six links to Periscope. A neck to not Unusual dream and fourth Akuna Matata, then Tolmac so able, followed further back in the race, then by Buffalo Bill Zoffany Rocket. Upswing made that very promising move into it and then didn't stay on and has run along last.